AI, a hot topic right now in the creative community, but I don't feel like anybody is actually educating us or showing us the new improvements or advancements in AI well enough, especially for the 3D community. So in this video, I'll show you exactly what you need to know when it comes to advancements in AI with 3D. I personally think it's important to stay up to date with everything that's occurring so you can take advantage of opportunities that otherwise you might miss. I plan on doing these at least once per month in order to keep everybody up to date. If you like that idea, let me know in the comments. So the first thing we'll cover is Han Yuan 3D World. This AI is from Han Yuan, who is one of the AI frontrunners right now. We also covered it in a previous video where I taught you how to generate 3D models from scratch for free. And now the same company has brought out a model that can generate 3D worlds. It's not perfect yet and it's more like a fancy 360 degree photo, but let's have a look. So I brought in this 3D render that I created. It's the subway station, you might remember it from other videos and I asked it to generate an entire 3D world and it did. So this is filling in all the details that are behind it, for example, and didn't actually exist. Or like this staircase over here, which definitely wasn't there before. Of course, it has this weird AI wonkiness to it still, and uh, it kind of messed up all the textures as well. So it's definitely not perfect, but uh, we can imagine how this is going. So on the Tencent website, you can play around with this. So 3d.hanyuan.tencent.com slash scene to 3D. And then you can fill in the image right over here, click on generate, and then it will generate this image. We, we also have this part right here. So here you can see some of the things that they show us and what you can do. So if we click on play, there are worlds that can be generated. You can look through the worlds, you can move around in them. And right here, we have one of those worlds. So I can simply move around in this and use W and it will move until a certain bound and then it will give this blue edge outside of the screen. But still, you can move forward, backward, left and right. And it's kind of interesting how this works. And there's also multiple ones. So if you hover your mouse on the right side here, you can select a couple of these. So let's select this one. And now we have this generation right here. And if we look at it, we can move around. Of course, the water doesn't move. So it's kind of weird looking at it like this. But once again, we can move around in this scene. I think this looks pretty cool. And I'm also going to show you a different model, which is also made by Han Yuan. And this might change the gaming scene forever. Uh, it's called Han Yuan Gamecraft. It's a high dynamic interactive video game generation with hybrid history condition. Now that's a lot of fancy terms, but basically what it comes down to is that you can generate an entire game from an image or from a text prompt. You can now generate an entire 3D world to move around in. Now, what it also has is that as soon as it has been generated, it preserves the original scene information after significant movement. So usually in AI, because it is generated, if you move backwards again, you will see that it changes the original generation. But now it is kind of memorizing what it generated before. And in this way, it should be possible to create entire 3D worlds to move around in. Now, it is possible to generate entire games. So right here, you can see they made a driving game, a shooter, a man on a horse, like a Skyrim, I guess, and stuff like this. And it seems very cool what this is able to do. And right now it's in its infant stages, but later on, we can definitely imagine entire worlds being generated. Now, the way I imagine this future unfolding is not only being able to make games faster, I also think it's going to expand the way that we think about games. So one of the things that I believe is that you might have a game with multiple different worlds. And of course, we already know MMORPGs like World of Warcraft, which is already pretty impressive in itself. But now imagine that people can literally generate their own worlds in the game and create multiple different games within one game. It's kind of like Roblox, but then in real time. But what I can imagine is that you have a self-learning game where the game basically programs itself as you go using the LLM as guidance and generating the game in front of your eyes. And this is going to be a way different experience where a game can be completely individual. The story that unfolds before you is truly your own story. It has not been guided by the makers of the game. It is one that you create yourself. I think that's very interesting. But also you might get 10 games in one where you have like an Assassin's FIFA Half-Life of Duty Farmville Tetris 40K. Basically you can have a multiverse game with multiple worlds to enter. I think the opportunities for this are massive and it's going to change the gaming experience, definitely. Now something similar that also does this is Yume, which is Japanese for dream. Yume, an interactive world generation model. And if we take a look at the video here, you can see that it's able to generate pretty realistic looking worlds that you can walk around in, all being based on some generative AI. It looks pretty real, it looks pretty interesting. Nothing of this has been released yet, but I do think it's interesting to see that multiple groups are working on the same thing. But now some more exciting news, because I personally use this model and it's completely free. It's about one, two point 
2. So you've probably heard about this video model before. It is practically one of the only video models alongside LTX, for example, that can generate videos locally. So you can download it on your computer and run it to make videos on your machine without making use of a cloud service network, which usually costs money. Either way, this is a very good video generator, which can do text to video, image to video. You can even use one face to make edits to existing videos, for example. Either way, I think one is a very good video generator because it can generate videos locally and it can generate it for free. The best video generators out there right now is Kling AI, HiLuo, ByteDance, Google's VO3, and Honu One video generator. So those are the five big ones in the market and maybe I forgot one, I don't know. And of course you also have one. Let me know if you'd like to see a video comparing all of these. So this next one, Diffumon 4D, looks pretty cool and has some futuristic vibes with it. Although we can't use it yet, I do see a lot of opportunities that are going to open up when this finally gets released. Basically it's a 4D model, which means that with a couple of camera views it turns everything into a 3D model you can move around with. And check this out, they have an interactive demo that we can play with. Diffumon and interactive demo click here to experience the 4d gs so basically what you can do is zoom in and out of this video you can look at it from behind from the front from whatever side you would like and this of course is going to be massive i imagine that you already know some things that you can do with this this is a dancer doing another type of dance and you can move around it from all angles it's not perfect you can see some weirdness going on here in the arms but I think it's pretty crazy that we can just move around this and have a look at it from all angles. So what does this mean for the future? So first of all, I think it's going to be a lot easier to do a matrix effect without needing all these motion control cameras and fancy equipment. But besides that, I also think it's possible to rethink the way that we watch movies. So what if we as viewers can stand in the room with the actors in the movie and experience it as if it's really happening before our eyes. We can move around in the room. We can have a look at the actor from different angles and see the facial expressions real close. Or when we create videos ourselves, we can change the angle because maybe we messed it up in the process and now we can move around and have a different angle for this. Who knows? I think there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with this. Let me know your ideas in the comments as well. Now, another big announcement is from Maya, a competitor of Blender, because they are integrating AI into their animations. It's called Motion Maker, and it's Maya's new AI animation tool. So if we look at the demo, basically what it does, you have a character, and you can lay down a motion path, and the animation will be AI generated to walk along this path, as you can see in this demo. And then as 3D animator, you can go in here using their layer system for animations and make different adjustments in order to make it look supreme and good. So this will save a lot of time for people animating in Maya. I think this is pretty impressive. And now that we're on the topic of 3D animation anyways, let's have a look at Anima X. And what it comes down to is that you can upload a model with a rig, so it already has to be rigged, and then you can prompt your animations. So you can simply type and then the animations will occur. And we can move around in this, like right here, and you can see that the animation looks pretty good. And we can actually turn off the skeleton, and the feet do have some issues when they're coming off the ground and landing again. So there are some cleanup issues going on here, but it's quite amazing that we can animate something simply using text. This also goes for animals. Uh, it's basically for humans and animals. And now it's walking around like this. Looks pretty cool. Now there's no muscles or things like that being generated here. So I think it's just the joints, but still it's pretty impressive. Here we can see some different type of text animations. Now the authors of this have said that they will release the code and it is on the to-do list in their GitHub. So release code and model. So maybe we will be able to use this in the near future. Of course, there's already other animation solutions such as Cascadeur, but what if you want to animate boneless meshes? Well, then there is animate any mesh. And the way this works is that you upload an image of a 3D model, it then generates an AI video of this, and then from the video, it will take the animation and place it back on your 3D model. Quite interesting way to handle things. As you can see, this model looks quite complex, but still it is able to make an animation for this completely in 3D. I think that's pretty interesting. We can see that the prompt is actually working out. The dog is walking, a dragon is flying, 
Now, what it says here on their GitHub, and we will release the code and the die mesh dataset mentioned in the paper ASAP. Please stay tuned for updates. I don't actually believe that this is going to be out there for the public very soon. Now, these were all the tools, but I still have two more news facts left that I think are quite interesting. So the first one is a mega deal that Amazon has made with Nextag 3D. And this mega deal means that Amazon is going to have this company generate 100,000 3D models. The company has produced over 100,000 AI powered 3D models models for Amazon and secure the contract to deliver 100,000 plus more of these models for kitchen and bath e-commerce platforms signaling rapid scaling in product image immersion. So this is basically used to turn 2D images that they already have on the Amazon website into 3D models that people can move around with especially for the architectural niche. Absolutely crazy and imagine the amount of money that went into that. Definitely a missed opportunity, guys. Now, I know there's a vocal minority of people who are very negative about AI, so I'm also going to throw in some positive news in this mix. Because a lot of people are insecure about their future, but as we look at the projections, things may not be as bad as we think it is. On Super AGI, they write that animations are a rising market, with the global animation market projected to reach 587 0.36 billion by 2026. This growth is driven by the increasing demand for motion graphics across various sectors, including entertainment, marketing, and education. One thing I think is interesting to note is that there is a high discrepancy in the way that people perceive AI. So in the East, in countries like China, for example, AI positivity, or the way people think about AI, is generally quite positive, all the way until 83% actually. And that is the case for a lot of Eastern countries and Latin American countries as well. However, in the West, we suffer from a sort of pessimism that has plagued us for the past 20 years. This has been an ongoing problem for a while now, and I don't think this is going to pan out well for us. Especially in Europe, where I live myself, there is quite a shortage of tech companies. So all the big companies come from America or China, like uh, Amazon or Alibaba or uh, Google, ChatGPT, stuff like that. In Europe, we don't even have an LLM like ChatGPT. The only thing that the people here are busy with is trying to get the government to govern us harder. I actually feel like people are asking for their further enslavement in order to make things harder to get done here instead of making it easier and thinking about the future. And all of this because they are asking for more and more laws, more strict regulations. Now, since the time that I've been alive, I've never actually seen a government perform something exceptionally well. Anything the government touches immediately loses quality while increasing in price. I personally can't imagine people looking up to the government for guidance. I feel like it's asking a donkey to teach you how to read. Now, I actually want to invigorate the spirit of the people and bring some positivity back in this world and have a good outlook on the future. So that's it for today. I hope you liked this format. And if you did, please leave a like and a subscribe. And also let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of this or if I should do a continuation of this series. And if you want to know how to generate your own 3D models for free, or you simply want to learn more about Blender, then I highly recommend checking one of those two videos next.